Hello and welcome to Global with me, Matthew Amreli Wally. Turkey has been hit by a wave of violent attacks just weeks after it started its synchronised war on terror. In Istanbul, the US consulate was fired on by two attackers. Elsewhere in the city, one policeman died following a suicide bomb attack on a police station. In the southwest, in the Kurdish province of Sirnak, four police officers were killed by a roadside bomb and one soldier died when a military helicopter was attacked. There were also twin attacks in Diyarbakir. Well, let me just show you some of the pictures in just a moment from those attacks in Istanbul because this is some of the footage of that dramatic moment at the US consulate. Well, two people escaped after that shootout, but one has now been arrested. A far-left group has claimed responsibility for that attack. Well, shortly after that, a bomb went off at a police station, injuring at least five police officers and several civilians. Well, the country has been on a heightened state of alert since Ankara began a crackdown last month on Islamic State, Kurdish and far-left militants. Turkey has also allowed America to use its air bases to launch strikes against IS. Well, let's go straight to Washington, speak to Blant Alizia, a Turkish analyst at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Uh, thank you so much for being on the program today. What do you make of this succession of attacks in Turkey today? It's not a surprise because ever since Turkey uh, decided to change uh, its policy and to allow U.S. Uh, planes to start using Injilik uh, Air Base in uh, southern Turkey, um, and in fact, six uh, planes, uh, U.S. Air Force planes, arrived and will soon start operations. And then parallel to that uh, began uh, um, operations both against the PKK uh, uh, bases in northern Iraq, as well as uh, um, the uh, uh, Islamic State just beyond its border. Uh, and then in, um, uh, began the internal crackdown that you mentioned. Um, it was uh, quite clear that uh, things were likely to get worse. And, um, and uh, the reason that uh, we're now focusing on it is perhaps because of the uh, uh, attack on uh, the consulate in uh, Istanbul more than the, the other attacks which took place today, as well as uh, uh, during the past three weeks. Yes, as you mentioned, we've seen other attacks over the last three weeks since the crackdown started. Do you think to have a crackdown and fight on three fronts is basically that they have bitten off more than they can chew? Well, there is, uh, uh, there is the other shoe, as it were, to, to, to drop, which is the, uh, the expected retaliation from the Islamic State. Uh, now, now, once the U.S. Uh, uh, planes begin their operations uh, south of the border, um, uh, then it's almost certain that the Islamic State will retaliate within Turkey. At the moment, it's the, the PKK, uh, as well as the leftist group that you mentioned, uh, that are carrying the, these, uh, out these attacks in Istanbul, as well as in the, in the predominantly Kurdish southeast. But uh, I'm afraid it's, it's likely to get worse over the next few weeks. It's difficult to say at this stage, but do you think the authorities are actually making headway with the crackdown? It's been going for a number of weeks, but are they making headway, do you think? Well, obviously, they did not pick up uh, uh, all the potential uh, uh, perpetrators of these kind of attacks. Otherwise, they would not be able to do uh, what they did today. Uh, the majority of the people who were picked up were PKK sympathizers or affiliates of, uh, of PKK-related uh, organizations. Uh, but the, 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 they were picked up mostly in uh, the rest of the country rather than the, the Kurdish southeast. Uh, I'm afraid uh, the, uh, the, uh, the PKK is going to retaliate uh, uh, perhaps even more than it has done for the attacks that were carried out on its bases. And that, combined with the, with the IS, uh, anticipated I IS attacks, uh, makes it difficult for me to believe that the, the authorities will get a grip on it uh, uh, as quickly as they uh, would ideally want. Uh, you know the political situation very well there in Turkey. Do you think there is a political unity to continue in this direction? We know that there are coalition talks going on. Do you think that across the board there is the desire to continue to travel down this route? Well, I'm afraid uh, Turkey is uh, more divided and more polarized than, uh, than it's been for, for some time. Ever since the June 7th elections resulted in a hung parliament, uh, Turkey is being ruled by a caretaker government headed by Mr. Dautolu of the uh, Justice and Development Party, the AKP. Uh, at this very moment, he, he was due to meet the leader of the opposition, uh, but the expectations of a coalition uh, are relatively low. 
Uh, so Turkey may be going into early elections. And in the early elections, uh, I'm afraid that the focus will be on the role of the, uh, of the Kurdish, uh, predominantly Kurdish HDP, and its relationship or sympathy or affiliation with the, with the PKK. So I'm afraid that, that the Turkish-Kurdish divide in, in Turkey is likely to get worse over the next few weeks with all its implications. Just a final thought, because you were mentioning uh, the Americans and, of course, more planes and personnel going into those uh, Turkish bases for coming attacks on IS. How vulnerable do you think Turkey is to IS, to attacks on their soil? You have a massive uh, tourism industry that they uh, base so much of their economy on. How vulnerable is it, potentially? extremely vulnerable. Uh, the, the tourism figures are, are, are down uh, quite a bit from, uh, from last year. Um, now, Turkey has been very careful uh, not to take on uh, the radicals, in fact, many of whom uh, have traveled through Turkey over the past three years to go and fight in Syria. So as Turkey now hosts uh, uh, U.S. planes uh, carrying out bomb, bombing raids against them, uh, as I said before, it's, it's certain that uh, they're going to retaliate and, uh, and the situation is likely to get worse before it gets better. Well, thank you for that analysis. There we have to leave it, uh, with our guests there in Washington, but let's go straight to Istanbul, get the latest on the ground because Celine Girit is there covering this story. Uh, a multitude of attacks, one after another over the last 24 hours. Just give me a sense of the mood where you are. It is grim here in Turkey. Uh, the funeral ceremony of uh, the policeman who got killed in Istanbul was held today uh, here in Istanbul uh, as the president Recep Tayyip Erdogan attended this ceremony as well as well as the ex-president Abdullah Gül. Uh, the mood was grim um, because I mean six security personnel have been killed only today. Since Turkey started the operations against the so-called Islamic State and the Kurdish PKK militants a couple of weeks ago more than 20 security officers have been killed. That is a huge number considering there was a ceasefire here in Turkey and the peace uh, process in place in Turkey previously. So people are very concerned that the country is heading back to the 1990s, uh, its dark periods when there was uh, killings uh, almost every day, there was extrajudicial killings, attacks, bombings, etc. So people are seriously concerned. As we speak, uh, the Prime Minister is scheduled to uh, go into coalition talks with the main opposition leader. And the main opposition leader uh, made a statement today calling out uh, for all the politicians in Turkey to come together, to get together and to find a solution to this violence that is increasing on and on. Uh, the government has not made a statement except the president uh, issued out a written statement offering his condolences for the dead policemen's uh, families, but uh, the government has not made another statement. The people are really worried in Turkey, and what they want is an end to the violence that is on the increase. Okay, Selin Girit there in Istanbul. Thanks very much for that. Thank you. Well, uh, do stay with us because we have uh, plenty more still to come on Turkey. One of the reasons, of course, the country is on high alert is because of uh, the Turkish airstrikes on both Islamic State and Kurdish separatists. Well, the BBC's GR Gol has been to the base of one of the main Kurdish separatist groups, the PKK, for an exclusive interview with the group's main leader. We'll show you that interview later here on today's Global. Now let's turn to some of the day's other main news stories because Malaysia says it is dispatching a team of experts to the Maldives to investigate reports that debris